Or 30 reactions from this morning's Supreme Court ruling on affirmative action continue to pour in. They ruled colleges and universities can no longer use race in their admissions decisions. Joining us now to tell us more about this and other big stories is our Washington correspondent, Peter Zampa. Peter, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, of course, Aaron. So first, let's talk about the Supreme Court ruling today in this college admissions case. What exactly did the justices say here? Yeah, you teed it up perfectly in a six to three decision along ideological lines. The justices saying race-based admissions are unconstitutional, citing the 14th Amendment under the Equal Protections Clause of that amendment, uh, saying that this is discriminatory effectively. Now, the schools involved in this case, Harvard and University of North Carolina, but a number of other schools signed on, including Yale, uh, schools across the country signing on to their in their support. But I want to read you some of the, the opinion here from Chief, Chief Justice Roberts. He said, for too long, universities have concluded wrongly that the touchstone of an individual's identity is not challenges bested, skills built, or lessons learned, but the color of their skin. Our constitutional history does not tolerate that choice. And of course, this was met with dissent from the three liberal justices on the court. Justice Sotomayor saying, the majority's vision of race neutrality will entrench racial segregation in higher education because racial inequality will persist so long as it is ignored. Justice Jackson also wrote this is a tragedy for us all. So really charged language in on both sides of this ideological aisle from these justices. Peter, there was also another case decided today. This involved the religious liberties of employees. Can you tell us a little bit about that case and what the court said here? Yeah, Aaron, this had to do with a USPS employee who said he could not work on Sundays citing his faith, saying he uses that day to go to church and, and recognize his faith. His employer was not happy about it. It shot all the way up to the Supreme Court, and the court largely indicated that they do side with him. They actually kicked it down to a lower court to rehear this case, to take another look at it, but they indicated that under religious liberties in this country, he was in his rights to request Sundays off. And Peter, former Vice President Mike Pence recently visited Kyiv, switching gears here in Ukraine. What came from that visit and why was it important for him to go there? Yeah, Aaron, this is Mike Pence staking out that claim as the pro-Ukraine candidate in this GOP field where it's sort of a big question because we know there are these more conservative elements of the GOP base who don't want to just keep throwing money at this war that's been dragging on, out of sight, out of mind. Um, it's no longer the first few days of this war. We're getting into years here, and some people just don't want to continue to send a blank check. Mike Pence went to the front lines. He said he met with heroes. He met with President Zelensky because he wants to show that he is that candidate who will wholeheartedly support Ukraine. He bashed the Biden administration for being too slow in sending armaments and money, even though they've sent billions of dollars. But he really wants to show that in this crowded field of GOP candidates, he is the one who's willing to go to Ukraine and support them. All right, a lot going on, a lot of good information. Our Washington correspondent, Peter Zampa, thank you so much.